Hi, my name is Alex with 8 Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be talking about sandboxes. I'm going to show you how to create a sandbox and why you should consider creating a sandbox and some of the amazing benefits of having a sandbox in Jura. If you haven't, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get any value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jura. Okay, so you do want to be a Jira administrator to be able to do this. Specifically, you want to be a site or org admin because you are going to have to be at admin.atlassian.com. Once you're there, you're going to come over to products and from products, you will see a link for sandbox. When you click on that, you will be taken to the screen where you're allowed to create a sandbox. Now, the sandbox is really interesting. This is only a paid premium feature. So that means that your company has to be paying for the enterprise or premium version of Jira. Otherwise, this is not gonna work out for you. The price differential is kind of significant. You're paying 2X the price. If Jira standard is like $7.50, which by the way, the price is gonna go up in a couple of weeks. But if you're paying $7.50 for Jira standard, in order to be able to do what I'm gonna explain in this video, you essentially have to bump yourself up to Jira premium, which is basically like $15 now. And so it's quite an investment. It's 2x the price. But is there value? Is there a an advantage to having a sandbox? And I think there is. And I want to show you what some of those values are. Because if you've ever messed up your production Jura, if you've ever experimented or if you've ever tried to do something and accidentally broke things, then you might get tremendous value from having a sandbox. So let's jump into our sandbox environment. And let me show you some of the benefits that you can do here that you otherwise would not have. And I'm not sponsored by Atlassian. I'm not a salesman for Atlassian, but this premium feature here of being able to have a sandbox, in my opinion, is one of two reasons why you would actually want to upgrade to the premium version of Jira. So let's go take a look and let's jump into more detail. Okay, so after you've created a sandbox, you can actually create a sandbox for whatever premium products you have. So if you have Jira Premium, you'll be able to create a sandbox environment for your Jira Premium. And if you have Confluence Premium, you'll be able to do the same thing and so on with like Jira Service Management. I've already created a Jira software sandbox. And one of the things that you're seeing here on my screen, and this is one of the bigger advantages, is that you can actually copy your production data. And what that means is you can essentially make a carbon copy, a clone, if you will, of your production Jira instance in that sandbox environment. Now, this can be good for a number of reasons. One, you now have a carbon copy of these projects. So if you ever want to experiment with a board or if you've ever just wanted to play around with just some of the settings of it at a Jira level, such as like a scrum master wanting to figure out how to create boards or how to change the filters on boards without impacting or affecting your production data, this is a great way to give some autonomy, give your users some, some room to explore, to learn, to, to get creative, to get messy, as Ms. Frizzle would say, and figure out how to use Jira without impacting the team. So this is great from just that perspective. Second, if you're a Jira administrator, the automation rules can sometimes be a little disruptive. If you're not careful, you can overwrite data and you can just cause all kinds of chaos. But having a sandbox allows you to experiment and play around. And because you have a carbon copy of that sandbox, you're essentially working off of production real data. It's just not going to impact the actual teams that are trying to deliver value and software for your company. So this is going to allow you to play around with story point summations. And it's going to allow you to play around with basically any automation rule without any consequences of essentially breaking or, or hindering your production teams because you're not gonna you're not gonna impact them. Another reason that you would want a sandbox is because when you are onboarding a new employee, maybe they don't know how to use Jira. And so this allows you to have a controlled environment where they can go in, explore, play around with things, create filters, create issues, and they can just get accustomed and familiarized with the data, with the way Jira works, and they can essentially get up to speed a lot quicker because you take away that stigmatism of, oh no, if I play around with this, I'm gonna break it and this is gonna be bad. But in the sandbox, because they're again, working off of real production data, 
but it's a clone, it's a copy, they can, they don't have to like fake things up, if you will. Because some people struggle. Some people, when they're learning or they're new to this environment, they don't know what thing one or thing two or thing three are. But if I have a copy of a real life project with real stories and real epics and real story points, then I can start manipulating the project and kind of getting a feel for it. And what's also great is if you ever diverge, if your sandbox ever becomes just so crazy, you can always go back to production and make another copy. And so the way you jump into your sandbox is you come back into your regular Jira. And when you go to the little grid at the top left corner, you should now have the little black arrow. And if you click on it, you should be able to see another instance of your Jira product. And so if you click on that, we're going to go into the sandbox. And if you blinked, you may have noticed that this is an exact copy, right? So I had it essentially bring everything over. I will say not everything comes over. So the automation rules in my production environment, they are they haven't been brought over. So you do have to recreate things. And this can be a good thing or it could be a bad thing because for the one part, you get extra practice, right? So recreating from a sandbox to the production or from production back to the sandbox, this is a great little practice of just every time that you can practice making an automation rule, that's always a good thing. But pretty much everything else, your, your permission schemes, your workflow schemes, your field configurations, everything else is copied over to the sandbox. Now there is a problem. There is a con. I don't know Atlassian. I mean, it makes sense why this is not a feature, but I, I almost feel like there should be like a button almost that you can say copy just this setting over to production. Because once you make a change in your sandbox, you have to manually recreate it in the production environment. So for example, if I make a whole new project and then I configure the workflow and I just fine tune it and I tweak it just the way I need this workflow and it's perfect. Well, once I get buy off from my stakeholders that we like the workflow, we need to then go back into the production environment, back into our normal day-to-day -day Jira and recreate the project recreate the workflow, recreate the custom fields. And so we're recreating a lot of it. Fortunately, you have like a playbook. You have, I usually put my sandbox on one screen and my production screen in another. And I just go down the settings and I'm copying things over, but it's error prone, right? If I'm not careful, I can make a mistake. So at last thing, if you're listening, if you're watching, that would be a really cool feature to add to maybe just be able to cherry pick things, settings, because you don't want to overwrite production with your sandbox data. <laughs> so you don't want that, but there's certain elements of that sandbox that I want to copy over. It'd be greater if we had a little bit more integration, a little bit more synchronization, if you will, between our sandbox and our production environment. Anyways, let me kind of just walk you through the sandbox real quickly. This, this basically is your Jira. There, you jump in here and everything's going to be exactly the same from that timestamp that I made that copy. So if production goes on to close a sprint, or they go on to add more scope, more issues, more stories, this is not going to stay in sync. It's, it's not automatically synced. So you have to go in and manually push data from the production to the sandbox whenever you want. You also need to be careful because sometimes you're working in production, and this is this is more of a word to the wise with respect to folks that have a lot of admins. If, you're work, if one of your admins is working on something in the sandbox and another admin is unaware of this, and they're like, oh, I just need to make a copy and they're going to copy the data. They just flushed away all the work that you've been doing. So you want to make sure that if you have multiple cooks in the kitchen, you're configuring and communicating when you're going to be copying data from your production to the sandbox. Otherwise, you're going to basically overwrite everything. Anyways, you can manage your users here. So this user management actually takes you to a whole different admin.elastion.com. You'll be able, if you go to your products, you'll notice that you have two products now. And so you can manage the users on each one. So you can create new groups. If you want to practice and explore creating just permission schemes and how to manage contractors, this is a great way. Another thing that you can do, another great benefit is that your apps. So if, if you want to experiment with a plugin and you're just not quite sure if it's going to work for you or your company, you can actually bring it into your sandbox first, play around with it, configure it, see if it works, see if it's going to meet your requirements and then go buy it in production. Now, the neat thing is if you've already purchased a plugin in production, you can actually bring it to your sandbox absolutely for free. Uh, unfortunately, if you have a, a plugin in the sandbox and you exceed your trial, you do start getting billed for it unless you have it paid already in your production environment. So again, another tip or trick here so that you can minimize your bills. But other than that, the sandbox is just a great place for you to, again, be like Miss Frizzle says, get messy, get dirty, experiment, 
figure things out because this is how you learn. This is how you come into a, a safe and protected controlled environment where if anything ever goes wrong, if you accidentally delete something, you can always just bring it right back from your production instance and have the latest. So I hope you're taking advantage. If you're on premium and you don't have a sandbox, uh, you're doing yourself a big disservice. So I hope this video was helpful, beneficial. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and drop a like because it helps out the algorithm quite a bit. Thank you for watching. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.